Okay, imagine this for a second. You're, what, 13 years old? And you don't just compete, you actually win. You become the youngest American ever to get a gold medal at the International Physics Olympiad. Which is, I mean, that's basically the top competition for young physicists globally. Exactly. And then, uh, not even a year later, you're 14 and NASA, NASA oh. comes calling. They want your help figuring out the physics for, uh, like, colonizing Mars. It sounds like science fiction, right? That, but it's not. Not at all. This is the real life, the amazing story of Christopher Harada. So, welcome everyone, you amazing explorers of knowledge, to the deep dive. Today, we are diving deep, really deep, into a story that feels as huge as the universe Hirata studies. Right, the life of this uh, child prodigy who became this really respected scientist. Yeah, and we're not just gonna look at the, you know, the sheer brain power, which is incredible. We want to explore the really powerful kind of emotional story here, resilience, um, even the controversies that sometimes pop up around genius. And what it all means for us, really. Exactly. It brings up this big question, doesn't it? Like, yeah. if you have this extraordinary potential, what do you do? Do you let it just flare out? Or, or do you find a way to make it last, to light things up? It's a timeless question. It really is. Okay, let's get into it. Let's unpack this incredible journey. So Christopher Harada's early wins, they were just like record breaking. They completely changed the game for what people thought a young person could do. Yeah, born in 82, California, he just sort of flew past all the usual timelines, academically speaking. Totally. At 13, I mean, think about it. Most of us are struggling with algebra, maybe figuring out middle school. He's mastering theoretical physics at this this insane level. Winning that gold medal. That gold medal. Yeah. At the International Physics Olympiad. And like you said, youngest American ever. That record. It still stands. It's just mind-boggling. It shows an intellect that was already... Uh, way ahead. And what's really key about those early achievements, it wasn't just, you know, raw talent, though obviously there was tons of that. Mm. It was this sign of a mind already working, as some sources put it, beyond the boundaries of convention. Right. To not just understand, but actually, like, innovate in really complex physics at that age, that points to something deeper, an intuition maybe? a different way of seeing things. Yeah, like seeing the patterns others couldn't. Exactly, it wasn't just memorizing stuff, it was real insight. And well, naturally, that got noticed. Big institutions like NASA paid attention. Yeah, that NASA detail always gets me. Mm. Seriously, while other kids are picking out backpacks for high school, maybe thinking about getting their driver's license soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's crunching numbers on the physics of getting us to Mars, mm -hmm. actually working on Mars colonization right. problems, so right. staggering. It really is. But you know, that kind of super fast rise, that early spotlight, it often comes with a price tag, right? Sometimes one you don't see right away. It sounds amazing, doesn't it? Being called a prodigy. It's like you're instantly famous, set apart. Yeah, like a superhero origin story. Kind of. But for Harada, it meant, well, carrying this huge weight. The expectations of a whole country, really the whole scientific community, before he could even legally drive a car. The pressure must have been immense. Unbelievable pressure. Imagine feeling like every little mistake, every time you hesitated, was somehow letting everyone down, betraying this, like, destiny people saw for you. Yeah, that spotlight can be really intense, blinding even. Absolutely. And uh, the sources do talk about that. The isolation that can come with that kind of brilliance so early on. They call it living in glass cages of brilliance. Hmm. Glass cages. That's a powerful image. Isn't it? Everyone can see you, admire you, but maybe very few actually get what it's like inside. The, the constant pressure to perform. Right, you're on display. Exactly. And Harada's academic path, I mean, it shows this. He goes to Caltech at 18. Caltech, which is known for being incredibly tough like an intellectual pressure cooker. Totally, one of the most intense places you could study science. And then, get this, he gets his PhD in physics from Princeton at 22. 22. Uh-huh, specializing in cosmology, you know, the study of the universe's origins and fate and gravitation, the big stuff. Wow. So he wasn't just learning, he was living at the absolute edge of human knowledge with, like you said, the world watching, expecting things. And his work there at Princeton, it wasn't just like, advanced student work, it was actually groundbreaking, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. He wasn't just absorbing theories, he was pushing them, mm -hmm. breaking barriers, um, developing new equations, really digging into the universe's biggest mysteries, like how it all started. I read something about his early papers on uh, the reionization epoch. Yes, a really critical time when the early universe basically went from dark and murky to, well, 
transparent and lit up by the first stars and galaxies, his models offered really important new ways to think about how that happened. Incredible. <laughs> but behind all that, behind the papers and the awards, you get the sense, like the source's hint, of this quiet, invisible struggle mm -hmm. and the extraordinary sacrifices that come with having a gift like that, a gift that demands so much. It's easy to focus on the achievements, isn't it? Harder to grasp the, the internal cost, the burden. Yeah. Which brings us to this really um, dangerous point for a lot of child prodigies, right? There's this curve. Yeah, that's a well-known pattern, unfortunately. That initial burst of fame, the talent just burns so incredibly bright, so fast. Yeah. And we've seen it happen again and again. Prodigies who everyone's talking about when they're 10 or 12. And then by their mid-20s. They've faded. Maybe into obscurity, sometimes even worse, into despair. It's like the world celebrates the phenomenon, but then kind of moves on if they don't keep up that impossible early speed. Right. So the big question for Harada was always hanging there. Would he make it through? Would he survive the sheer weight of his own brilliance? Or would he end up as another, you know, cautionary tale? And this, this is where his story gets really fascinating, I think. It tells us so much about what makes genius last. Okay. Because the answer was a definite no to burning out. He didn't just get through that tricky period, he actually broke through it. He grew, he changed. He didn't stay stuck as just the teen genius. Exactly. He refused to be defined only by that early identity. What seems key, based on what we can gather, is maybe his ability to uh, compartmentalize, to separate the public image and all those expectations from his just pure deep focus on solving the scientific problems themselves. Like finding refuge in the work itself. Perhaps. That plus this just relentless curiosity that seemed bigger than the pressure. It let him turn that initial, you know, lightning strike into this long, steady, incredibly powerful light. He went from being an amazing kid to being an amazing scientist on his own terms. That's incredible. And that shift, that breakthrough, it led to real lasting impact, didn't it? Absolutely. Not just continued success, but deep contributions. He's a professor now, right? University of Ohio. That's right. A freely respected professor doing really cutting edge research in physics and cosmology, still tackling the biggest questions out there. Like what? What's he focused on now? Well, things like the fundamental nature of space-time itself, um, the whole mystery of dark energy. That force pushing the universe apart faster and faster. Exactly. That enigma. And understanding how the first galaxies formed, these huge islands of stars, and really the story of infinity itself, the grand scale stuff. Wow. So he didn't just survive that dangerous curve. He totally thrived. He became a leader in his field. He really did. It says so much about his resilience, his ability to keep growing. So, okay, let's pull back a bit. Why does his story, you know, a story about complex physics and personal strength, why does it matter to those of us not calculating cosmic equations? What's the takeaway for us? That's a great question. Well, I think while he's figuring out the laws of the universe, his own life story teaches us these kind of laws of resilience that really hit home. You know, it's mm -hmm. like living proof that being brilliant isn't just about that first flash of talent. It's so much about the endurance, the sticking with it, the the quiet courage it takes to keep that light burning steadily over time. Turning the spark into a steady flame. Exactly. And his life, it feels like this bridge, connecting young people with big dreams to what's possible, showing them that brilliance needs nurturing to last. Which does bring us to that other side of the coin, doesn't it? The uh, controversies of genius, yeah. some people call it. The debates that stories like his always seem to spark. Right, because not everyone sees it as purely positive. No, critics often raise flags about, well, the fairness, maybe even the ethics of pushing kids who are exceptionally gifted into the spotlight, into these very demanding, very adult roles so incredibly early. Like, what are they potentially missing out on? Exactly. The argument goes that while they're getting all this intellectual stimulation, maybe they miss out on key parts of just being a kid. You know, the freedom to mess up without the world watching, learning social skills in a more natural way, just playing. Yeah, the unstructured time. Yeah, right. So the question becomes, did Hirata or others in similar positions lose something vital from their childhood? And can that intense pressure, especially when you're still developing, kind of warp your emotional or social growth, maybe leave behind issues later on, even if you achieve amazing things? These are tough questions. There aren't easy answers. Not at all. And the sources we looked at definitely reflect different viewpoints on how society handles accelerated development. And that's why this isn't just about his biography, right? Mm -hmm. It makes us look at ourselves as a society. It forces us to ask, 
When we find this amazing brilliance, especially in a child, are we truly nurturing it, looking at the whole person? Or are we maybe without meaning to kind of exploiting it for our own excitement or national pride or whatever it might be? Yeah. And what's the real cost? Not just to that person, but maybe to what they could have contributed differently. Mm. Hirata's life isn't just inspiring. It's also this big, complex question for all of us about how we treat our most exceptional minds. Do we help them thrive fully or do we risk kind of crushing them under all our expectations? It's a conversation worth having, definitely. So when you boil it all down, the main lesson from Harada's whole journey, it feels like it goes beyond physics, beyond cosmology. It's yeah. about, I don't know, humanity's constant reach for the impossible, right? And the sheer personal strength that takes. Mm. His story seems to whisper that, you know, destiny, even if you seem destined for great things, it's not enough on its own. You have to choose it. You have to choose resilience over and over in those quiet moments of struggle that nobody else sees. Greatness isn't just about starting strong or being celebrated early. It's about enduring, adapting, growing, really transforming over the long haul. And if you think about it, his cosmic battles, trying to understand the universe, they kind of echo the battles we all fight every day, don't they? How do you mean? Well, okay, you might not be calculating how to get to Mars. Definitely not. But you are fighting your own battles, right? Of resilience, of keeping hope alive, of just pushing through obstacles in your work, your life, your goals. Yeah, that's true. We all have our own versions of that. Exactly. And his story is this powerful reminder that success isn't just about talent. It's like courage times perseverance. That steady dedication is what fuels every real breakthrough, whether it's discovering something about the universe or just getting through a tough week. Hmm. What part of his journey really sticks with you? For me, it's that idea. Mm -hmm. Genius, if it doesn't have that resilience underneath it, it just crumbles, it flares up, and then it's gone. Right. But resilience, even if you don't think you have genius in the traditional sense, resilience. That can move mountains. It can build whole new possibilities for anyone who's willing to work at it. Christopher Harada's life, the way he kept his brilliance going, it feels like this urge to all of us. You mm -hmm. know, keep going when things feel dark, when the challenge looks too big. Mm -hmm. He shows us that real brilliance isn't just about that one flashy win, that first spark. It's about the sustained light, that steady glow that keeps pushing back. So whether you're fighting to finish school or pouring your heart into a dream project or maybe just struggling to get out of a tough spot. Or building a better future. Yeah, or just trying to build a better tomorrow. His journey speaks to that struggle, to that effort. So maybe here's something to think about as we wrap up. Don't shy away from your own potential. Whatever your unique gifts are, embrace them. Yeah. And try not to let the weight of what others expect or even what you expect of yourself crush that spark. And please, Never give up on dreaming bigger, reaching further than maybe anyone thinks is possible. Maybe even further than you think is possible. Because you never know. You never know. The universe is listening, maybe. Yeah. And someday, someone might look back at your journey, just like we're looking at Harada's, and they'll wonder, like, how did they do that? How did they overcome those odds? How did they shine like that? And the answer could be simple. It could be. You chose to shine. So ask yourself today, when things get tough, will you burn out or will you burn bright? Because that choice, as Christopher Harada's story shows us so powerfully, that choice is always yours.